I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner Elusive, Ellie for short. High five. Good job. Good job. Today, we are going to talk about <laughs> enclosures and how to make sure that you actually have a good, good-sized enclosure for your rabbit and to make sure that they can be comfortable in their home base. <laughs> If you're new to my channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, hit that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so that you can be notified of my weekly videos. Rabbits are very social pets. In the wild, they would live in like family groups underground where they would actually have a pretty complex social hierarchy and social interactions with each other. So leaving them alone all day in a cage is actually really bad for their health because like humans, rabbits need a certain amount of social interaction in order to be happy and healthy or else they'll end up getting lonely and depressed. So we really want to shift our mindset to think of our rabbits as like social family animals that, that can hang out with us for most of the day. So when I talk about an enclosure, I don't want you to think about this is some place where your rabbit's going to stay most of the day even when people are home and maybe they'll get out for a little bit for some time to exercise for half an hour a day or something. That's not how I want you to think of it. Instead, I want you to think of your rabbit's enclosure as a safety net for them. Like how with children and little kids, you might have a playpen or a crib that will keep them safe when you can't supervise them. That's how you want to think of your enclosure. It's a playpen for your rabbit to keep them out of trouble because rabbits can be troublemakers. What we want to do is instead of treating your rabbit's enclosure like a cage, you want to treat it like a home. You want to think of your rabbit's enclosure as someplace where they can still be comfortable and happy even when they don't have access to a bigger area. And this means you have to think about the amount of space that your rabbit's enclosure has and you also have to think about other things such as the type of flooring and can your rabbit stand up, how many toys can they have. But the main point is you want to make sure your rabbit's enclosure does not become a trap for them and instead you want to make it a home. Many of you will have heard of free roaming rabbits which is when you allow your rabbit to essentially roam the house or roam rooms in the house without having to be closed in, in an enclosure like ever. And that is an awesome option, but I also understand it's not always possible since rabbits really can be troublemakers, like biting on walls, uh, digging into carpet or, or chewing on wires, things like that. It's not always possible to allow a rabbit to free roam when you can't supervise them. So don't feel like free roaming is the only option you have. And if you can't successfully get your rabbit to roam around like, like a cat or dog would, then you're somehow failing your rabbit. You can have an enclosure. You just want to make sure that the enclosure is good for your rabbit. I will say for free roam rabbits, it's still a good idea to have an enclosure for them, even if it's never shut and they can always go in and out as they will. It's just a good idea to have a home base for them where that's where their bathroom is, that's where you put their food and their water, and it's just someplace your rabbit can go to relax when they kind of want to withdraw a little bit. The first and most important thing that you want to look for is size. Unfortunately, there are a lot of rabbit cages that are sold on the market that are really just much, much too small for rabbits. So what you want to do is you want whatever enclosure that you have for your rabbit to be at least, at least three to four times the full length of your rabbit. So the full length of a rabbit is going to be their length completely stretched out on the ground. So, so Ellie here is <laughs> demonstrating who what it to be when she's laying down full. So from the tippy toes to her little nose. And that's what the full length of your rabbit is going to be. So she is somewhere between a foot and a foot and a half. So minimum, I would want a, um, let's see, a foot and a half times three eels, three, four and a half <laughs> foot long enclosure, but bigger is better. So hers is actually about six to seven feet in length. And then, and then the width, you want the width of the enclosure to be at least twice of their full length. 
Uh, so for Ellie, I would want to be at least three feet, and it is about four feet here. And then you also want your rabbit to be able to stand up all the way on their tiptoes without hitting the top of their head against the top of whatever enclosure or cage you have. You just want to make sure that it is tall enough for them. If you have more than one rabbit, you actually don't need to double the space. You may want to make it a little bit bigger, but if you're just bringing in one more rabbit and they are approximately the same size or smaller than your current rabbit, then it's actually okay to keep it about the same size. The way that we think of the size of the enclosure is we want to give your rabbit enough space to move around without bumping into the walls of the enclosure. And it's not really going to change that fact by just adding one more rabbit in. You don't need to think of significantly increasing the space, but I mean, you still can. <laughs> the bigger the space you can give your rabbit and still like keep them safe and keep them out of trouble, then the better. The other thing that you want to look for in getting a good rabbit enclosure is the type of material used. There are a few options here generally, and I will get into details about these later, but what we're going to look for is there are metal options, there are plastic options, and there are wood options. And you're going to have to take your rabbit's personality into account when you choose what is best for your rabbit. Metal tends to be the most durable and the least likely that your rabbit is going to destroy at some point during their lifetime. I had one rabbit who chewed through plastic, like would make holes in, I had a plastic litter box for him and he would literally chew holes in the plastic litter box and that was not good because then he's ingesting all the plastic. So uh, in those cases, you would definitely want to go towards metal. For wood, you really need to be careful about the type of wood that you give your rabbit. Since for some reason, not all rabbit hutches are made of wood that's safe for rabbits to eat. You would think they would be, but they're not. So that's something that you need to be careful about, and I will talk about that uh, in <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> if you already have an enclosure that you're just realizing now is too small for your rabbit, then I do have some tips for you for how to increase the amount of space that your rabbit has. You don't necessarily have to get rid of the enclosure you have. It can just be a matter of adding more space that will be safe for them. So I have some tips for you coming up for that, so stay tuned. <laughs> now we're going to talk about the specific types of cages that will typically be used as rabbit enclosure and which ones you might want to get for your rabbit. The first type of enclosure that I'm going to go over is a large dog crate. These would typically be used to transport large dogs or crate training dogs, to teaching them to go back into their crate. But you can get one of these that's used for large dogs and use it for a rabbit's enclosure. Now, in going by the size guidelines that I just gave you, you really want to make sure it is a large dog crate. So the ones that are about 48 inches long, so four feet long or more, those can actually be very good sized enclosures for rabbits. In these enclosures, you do want to check the flooring. Um, sometimes it's a wired flooring, sometimes it's got like a slick plastic flooring. So whichever type of flooring it is, you'll want to put some type, kind of mat or a towel down so that your rabbit's feet can get traction and won't be on the wire flooring all day. Because wire flooring can be bad for rabbit's feet and plastic flooring can make them slip around all the time and it's not necessarily great for their back. So you want to give them some kind of traction for their flooring. But large dog crates can be great because A, they have a lot of area, they're easily transportable because they can collapse and you can just stick it in the back of your car and bring it with you. They're made to, be, they're made to fold up like that. Uh, they're easy to clean because you can um, take, the, take the top off and usually there'll be a tray underneath that you can just clean up. So that's definitely an easy option for you. You can also basically make your own DIY enclosure for those of you who prefer to do things yourself. <laughs> for these, you can either go the complete DIY route and like make, <laughs> create your rabbit's enclosure from like wood. If that's something you're interested in, you probably know better how to do that than I would. But you can also make a DIY enclosure with the, the storage cubes, essentially, if you get a set of those wire storage cubes that you can zip ties and attach them together and create whatever shape you want. You can very easily use that to create a multi-level rabbit condo that can be a great place for your rabbit to hang out and explore. The pros of doing it this way is you can make it into literally whatever shape you want to make it. Uh, so 
it can fit into weird shapes or you can make it uh, multi-levels with like hopping platforms for your rabbit. Making a DIY enclosure also tends to be the cheapest option if you're trying to be budget friendly and make a a as cheap an enclosure as you can for your rabbit while also making it large and comfortable. Now my recommendation and my preference, the one that I use, is a rabbit exercise pen. It's also called an X-Pen, rabbit play pen, anything like that. Originally these were used as creating exercise areas for rabbits, but if you use them as the actual enclosure instead, it can actually be nice big spaces and versatile spaces that can make a very comfortable enclosure for rabbits. This is just that freestanding gate essentially that can fold up into a small stack of gates that is easy to transport and easy to set up. It can fit into very different uniquely shaped spaces and you can set it up, make a little enclosure. It's what I have here behind me that comes all the way around and then when I need to close it, I'll close it up on this end. My favorite thing about this is actually how easy it is to clean. <laughs> with these gates, with the X-Pens, all you have to do is vacuum, basically. I'll sweep up some of the larger pieces of hay that Ellie makes a mess with, but then just vacuum and it's done. <laughs> it's super easy and I love it. With a rabbit exercise pen, you will probably want to get some kind of area rug to put underneath it. If you have them in a room with slick floors like wooden floors or tile floors, then you definitely want some kind of area rug or mats or something like that to put underneath. But even if you have them on a carpet, having an area rug can keep them from digging into the carpet. So there is that extra piece that you will want to get with this one. I do recommend going for natural fibers such as sisal, especially if your rabbit tends to uh, chew on pieces of rug. This way you don't have to worry about whether or not they're ingesting the pieces of it. Another reason that these X pens are actually good options is because they are actually much cheaper than more traditional cages. So not only do they give your rabbit more space, they're also cheaper. They're also the more financial option. If you're interested in getting one of these exercise pens for your rabbit to have as their enclosure or to at least increase the amount of space that their enclosure has, then I'll have links for you in the description below. Now let's talk about wooden hutches. These can sometimes be great options for a rabbit. They, they can be big, they can be made of good types of wood, but they're not always going to be... they're not always going to be what you want to choose. Some wooden hutches are quite big, they have multiple levels, and they have plenty of space for rabbits to move around, get a little bit of exercise, but some of them are quite small. You want to make sure you take those size guidelines that I mentioned earlier into account. Now you also want to look at the type of wood that is used to make your rabbit's hutch. Because for some reason a lot of hutches that I've seen are actually made out of cedar. <laughs> cedar is actually not good for rabbits to chew on. And rabbits chew on things, so they might be chewing on the wood. You want to check, make sure that the enclosure that's being sold and marketed for rabbits is not actually going to poison them if they eat it. Pine is another type of wood that's kind of questionable. Most of the time when pine is used in wooden boards, the actual poisonous part has been dried out of it. But for me, if I can still smell that pine scent, then I would still stay away from it just to be safe. That's in general the rule you want to use. If you get a rabbit hutch online and it still has like a strong scent, like that wood scent, then it might not be great for your rabbit because it's those those phenols, I think they're called, that can end up being poisonous if your rabbit ingests them or even inhales them for long periods of time. Also, if your hutch is painted, you want to be careful to make sure that the paint is on areas where your rabbit can't chew on. So you definitely don't want the inside of the hutch to be painted. The other thing that makes me not really recommend wooden hutches is they tend to be the most expensive option. These are more traditional and they look prettier and using wood is more expensive than using metal or plastic. So if that's something that you're conscious about, then probably a wooden hutch is not for you. Wooden hutches are also not the easiest to clean. I like having easy to clean stuff. I don't like spending hours cleaning. So this is something that for me is just like, mm, maybe not. But some of them will have a tray you can pull out and then you can clean the tray, but 
even that it can be kind of a pain but sometimes wooden hutches can like they get hay stuck in them and you have to try and like climb inside to clean it or they can get stained by urine it they're not the greatest to clean so for me they're definitely not my preference even if you can find one that's big enough and has a, a safe wood for your rabbit now let's look at the options that usually are not great for your rabbit because they are almost always too small first we'll talk about plastic cages these used to be less common but now more and more they're sold as sometimes the cheapest options online so people will end up gravitating towards them more and more but almost always these are much too small for rabbits it might be an option to get a large plastic enclosure for a tiny rabbit one that's not going to get more than two to three pounds but I still wouldn't recommend it. You can still give them more space just by getting them an, an exercise pen. So like, you don't have to get them the, the minimum size. You can get them a bigger space and it'd be better and it's easier to clean. And I would still recommend going for one of the good options anyway. Especially because once you do get to the larger sized plastic enclosures, they get more expensive anyway. So the exercise pen, is gonna be cheaper. <laughs> the other thing that plastic cages have is a slick flooring. This is easily fixed by putting down a mat or a towel, but it's something that built in is not gonna be great for your rabbit. These ones are also almost always gonna be too short. They have like a top to them that's just, your rabbit won't be able to stand up all the way. So that's another thing you have to make sure that you remember to think about. The other type that is almost always going to be too small for rabbits is those metal wire cages that are often used. Uh, these ones have been available for years and years and years and my family even used them at first before we learned how to you know better house our rabbits. These have a lot of the same downfalls as the small plastic cages where it's just too small. The metal wire flooring can end up causing sores on rabbit feet so you definitely will want to put a mat down to give your rabbit more comfortable flooring so their feet will be okay. They're usually not the easiest to clean and they're also usually too short for rabbits. All in all, they're generally not going to be a great option and would be much better to go with an exercise pen or a large dog crate. Of course, these options that are not great for rabbits also are the ones that are marketed towards new rabbit caretakers the most. So a lot of people end up with these cages that are too small and now you're just finding out, oh no, I have a cage that's too small for my rabbit, what can I do? Luckily, it's actually a very, very easy fix. So you don't necessarily have to get rid of your cage. Uh, it can still be a little home base for your rabbit. Sometimes rabbits also get attached to their cage, so you don't wanna just take away something that they think of as their home, even if it's not ideal for them. So a better thing to do is actually to attach attach another area to it that can still be safe and keep them out of trouble so you don't have to supervise them while they're there, but it can still give them more space to be happy and comfortable. To do this, it's really simple. You'll just wanna get an exercise pen and essentially attach it to the sides of the cage. I found out the hard way that if you attach it to the edge of the cage, kind of right next to the door, your rabbit can end up hopping up on top of the cage and then hopping out outside of the enclosure. <laughs> So you do want to make sure you have your original cage up against a wall and then attach the new X-Pen so that there is not a gap for your rabbit to hop out of if they so desire. You can attach the enclosure with zip ties or you can use uh, just string in general which can help you untie it. Or when I first started I got these kind of... Um, they were twisty ties, but they were more durable than your average uh, twisty tie that you would get on like a grocery bag. So I used those twisty ties to close and open the gate whenever you know I wanted to let my rabbit in and out of the enclosure. It's really easy to improve your rabbit's living conditions. They're not that expensive. You can just attach it and then boom, your rabbit has more space. Because I know it can be really confusing when you're first getting a rabbit. It's just a lot of information is thrown at you. But you're here now and now you have better information and you can very easily go and make a happy, comfortable home for your rabbit so that they're not just like stuck in this little cage all day and instead they can have some time to move around and play even when you can't supervise them. If you are interested in getting one of those X-Pens, you can check out the description below. I do recommend getting a tall one so that your rabbit can hop out, you know? Check that out if you want to give your rabbit more space. 
And thank you so much for watching, and I do hope to see you next time.